Right, looking ahead to the November elections, you know, right now there's a new push to put Teresa Rayford back in the running for mayor of Portland. Rayford placed third in the primary election for mayor this year, which means she's not on the official ballot this fall. The top two finishers, Mayor Ted Wheeler and second place finisher Sarah Iannarone, will face off in the November 3rd general election. But a new write in campaign is now working towards a different outcome. Teresa Rayford joins us live this morning to talk about the new support and how it's being received in this current climate. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Very good. So good to talk with you. I, I want to ask your reactions to this new write-in campaign. Well, <laughs> obviously, as a community organizer, I'm thankful for the effort that's being put forth to do the campaign. Um, and in the current climate, I understand why it's so essential and necessary for people to have leaders that they can count on, that they can get information from, and that they can trust. And so um, I'm just honored that community is doing something that I literally don't have the bandwidth to handle right now um, with the work that we're doing. Yeah, well, and speaking of that, you know, you are well known in the community and as the founder of Don't Shoot PDX. So what are your views on the nightly protests, uh, both the ones that are, you know, more peaceful and then the ones that we're seeing overnight near the Justice Center? I mean, you have to consider what peaceful is when we talk about the right to protest, the freedom of expression, um, the artistic expression of activists when they're uh, standing up for their right to petition their government for redress. Um, the violence that I see um, that that comes in is what makes the protests less peaceful. And I see the violence coming from the police, obviously. Um, and I'm harmed by that. I'm, I'm sad by that. I feel like, you know, um, this is an interruption of not only the, the crisis that we're dealing with this pandemic, but a lot of people who are wit witnessing this, I don't really... Um, I don't believe that our city and our state realizes the health impacts, the emotional impacts of people watching these streams, um, being motivated to support the activists that are being harmed, uh, showing up for justice, for racial justice in a climate in Portland where we know we're known across the nation for our racism and our abuse tactics against people. I think it's just hard to watch. Um, I was just watching the news before we got on and you can see the expression on my face. I'm not happy about any of the violence that's happening in our community. And I really wish more leaders would speak out before it turns into something that we can't get past, which I've said before, I think someone's gonna end up getting killed and the violence we witnessed over the last 36 hours is just tremendous. Yeah, I think it's been hard for so many people to watch and to feel that they do wanna push for change and at the same time, they don't wanna see their city torn apart here. So I want to ask you what what kinds of action and and statements from city leaders would you like to be seeing right now? We've seen Mayor Wheeler this week be critical of some of the federal response and some of the federal agencies that have come into the city. Uh, but what else do you think Portland city leaders need to be doing in this situation? I think they should be responding and asking for violence not to be used against people that are petitioning their government for redress. Um, I think that when we talk about Black Lives Matter and the fact that Black Americans are being killed in this country um, in overwhelming and overrepresented numbers, especially in communities like ours, uh, that the violence needs to be addressed by the leaders, that the violence that's happening against Black people needs to be addressed. Uh, we know that the number of racist attacks, hate crimes, uh, surged after Donald Trump was elected here in Portland, in the city of Portland, in the state of Oregon. But we've never seen a big address towards those issues. I just finished up a trial with families that were, you know, victim survivors of Jeremy Christian's, uh, you know, his rant and his rage and his murder on the Max train. And I don't see leaders speaking out about that. And that's, it's very concerning. Yeah, that, that was such a, yeah. a disturbing incident. How, how does someone, if they want to, to join this campaign, this write-in campaign for you to become mayor, um, how can they join? Well, I, it's, it's totally organic. So there's literally a write-in Teresa Rayford. Is it write-in Teresa? Write in Teresa Rayford at gmail.com. And there's so much social media. There's hashtags and um, a lot of other things that are happening with that. And I'm excited about it. It's the youth. It's a big group of community. Um, and I'm very, you know, I'm, I'm thankful for that effort because right now my response is going towards the COVID-19 and the Black Lives Matter issues that we're dealing with in our city because 
obviously no one else is responding. Teresa, I, I can tell it has been a, a long stretch of weeks here for you. And, and as you mentioned earlier, you, you feel like you just don't have the bandwidth right now to be also looking into this write-in campaign. Are you concerned at all that uh, at the rate that we are moving here with the racial unrest with COVID-19, are, are people going to run out of steam before November? What is your message to voters to, to hang in there until then? I think that if voters want change, that we have more than enough time to research the leaders, the people that are on the ballot, and the people that, um, you know, in a general election, write-ins are applicable. Um, I think that people should do their research and they should vote not just based on the current trauma that they're experiencing, but the leadership that they know is going to help us be resolved once this is all over. Uh, we don't know how long this pandemic is going to be going on. We don't know how bad our economy is going to get. Uh, right now, there is a big division and racial division in our community that is overwhelming um, even our systems of, of social structures. So um, we need to really look into what kind of leaders can impact our city and help us get healthy together. All right. Well, Teresa Rayford, thank you so much for joining us this morning and, and best of luck to you in your efforts. Thank you.